Hello and welcome to another episode of Mindcraft. Today we return to the mid 20th century to observe Seymour Benz's exploration of the finer structure of genes. Imagine it is 1947 and the field of molecular biology is booming. DNA structure is about to be discovered by Watson and Crick, and others like Morgan and Sturt Evant have already proven the theory of chromosomes, discerning their linear structure and that they contain hereditary elements called genes. Seymour Benzer, an associate professor in physics, reads Erwin Schrödinger's book, What is Life? Inspiring him to develop a physical understanding of gene structure. Consequently, for the next two decades, he delves into bacteriophage genetics, becoming part of the legendary American phage group, unofficially led by biophysicist Max Delbruck. I'll be using basic blocks to break down Benzer's bacterial biology. Let's begin. Benzer wanted to determine the arrangement of elements within genes, seeing whether they also followed a linear pattern. Instead of a quantitative attitude, he looked at genes through the lens of topology, this involved qualitative questions, asking if two parts of the structure were connected rather than using arbitrary measurements of distance. Benz's studies involved a specific genetic region of bacteriophage T4 called the R2 loci, which is associated with rapid viral growth. Through recombination tests of R2 mutants, Benzer could identify overlapping mutations. His methods involved his own T4-R2 system, which is arguably one of his greatest contributions, having been already utilised by him to prove genes were divisible. This was quite shocking to others, including Delbruck, who previously believed genes to be indivisible. The system was also adapted by Crick and Brenner to help crack the genetic code. But back to the topology. To explore the R2 genetic region, Benzer used host strains of E. coli called B and K. Because R2 mutants were defective in K, Benzer grew mutants in B, originally obtaining over 2,000 R2 mutants. Clearly, he was a man of culture. Yet many reverted to the standard phenotype, whilst others were leaky. To avoid these limitations, only 145 non-reverting mutants were used. Benzer then performed recombination tests by infecting K cells with different R2 mutant pairs, recording whether the standard R2 phenotype was exhibited. This provided the qualitative answer of whether two mutations overlapped or complemented each other. So how could this data be used to determine whether the structure was linear and continuous? Let's consider the topology of a linear structure. See this line of blocks which has a standard active structure in a particular order. If I remove a block and replace it with this, it now carries a mutation and is inactive. Now we see two lines of blocks which both have faulty sections. I have recombined these to produce the standard structure, since the faults do not overlap. But take this third version. The mutated section is a lot larger and overlaps with the other versions. This means that although the first and second complement each other, the third cannot be paired with either to produce the standard structure. If I had unlimited versions, I could determine where all the mutations occur across a continuous linear space, also revealing a map of the structure. But what if I don't already know the order of the mutations? Well, that's where recombination matrices come in handy. Here is my illustration of Benz's unordered recombination matrix for 19 R2 mutants. Green means the standard type was produced through recombination, and red means recombination didn't occur often. After arranging the mutants in dictionary order by plotting the red in an unbroken series, you can determine the order of mutations and their relative linear positions. Larger mutations such as H23 overlap multiple smaller mutations, which is why they are not complementary with multiple mutants. Despite not all 145 R2 mutants being crossed, the final matrix was still consistent with the linear structure. From this, Benzer deduced an approximate order of mutations in the R2 region, strongly corroborating with his hypothesis of a simple linear structure within genes, with very low probability of occurring by chance. This topological knowledge led him to further investigate gene topography, through which he proposed different features of mutations. Ultimately, Benz's findings revealed the universal linearity within the finer structure of genes and laid the foundation for future mutation analyses, signifying his critical contribution to the field of genetics. And with that, my time is up. But in future, we shall see more of Benza. You've been watching Minecraft. Remember to like and share this video. I'm trying to go viral.